Hi guys, happy Friday. So did you guys have a good, uh, I don't know if uh, I'm going to call it a holiday because I don't really think it's a holiday, but I hope you guys had good food and you were with your families and the people that you love and you had a great day. So, all right, we're going to pick right back up with George Pickingill. Incredible man. I actually had dreams about him last night. Can't remember what, but it was weird. It was about his dentures. It was literally about his dentures. They were wooden. Very odd. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> right back to it. So now, when George Pickingill went for his regular, I love this, this is all folklore for right now, stories and, you know, the witch stories from the local communities. So when George Pickingill went for his regular walk to the public house, or, yeah, the public house, frightened mothers gathered up their children and ran indoors with them. People crossed the street to avoid him, and nervous villagers drew their curtains when he passed by in case he put the evil eye on them. I love that. It was also believed that all cunning men um, had to do was touch somebody with his curiously carved blackthorn walking stick or a blasting rod. Um, he would mutter a few words under his breath, and within a few hours they would fall ill from an unknown malady. So it was no use calling a doctor, as he would be baffled by the nature of the illness and unable to cure it. <laughs> These stories about this man are wild. I love it. So, Pickingill also used to center, oh, used to um, enter the village shops and demand free food. So, any request he made for a jug of beer, a loaf of bread, or a joint of meat, as I know, I was like, what? Um, was never refused because the shopkeepers feared that uh, the terrible consequences. <laughs> what a reputation can do for somebody. He even lived rent-free, which is incredible, in his cottage because the landlord was too scared to ask him for payment or evict him. Like so many of the old-time rural cunning men, Picking Hill seems to have taken full advantage of the superstitious fear he generated among the local people and lived well on it. <laughs> I, I'm really glad that we don't do that today. I'm glad that we're not like that, the modern, traditional witches. I mean, I don't know. There probably are people like that, but I just, yeah, that's not me. So, one of um, Eric Maple's informants in the village was a local woman called Lillian Garner. And all of this is actually still in the Amazon Prime movie, the parrot documentary, um, The Witches of Essex. Essex. So, um... So in his book, he describes her as Granny and um, a much-loved character. Elsewhere, he refers to her as the last white witch of Cainwin and that she was following um, her in her mother's footsteps. So he said that she came down from Old Dutch stock and was descendant from the Hollanders who came over in the 17th century to help drain the Essex marshes to create new farmland. It's all about farming, and it's very odd that I still live on this farmland in a farmhouse, which I think is amazing. Now, Mabel describes Garner as an adept in white magic, unquote, who was consulted by the villagers if they believed they had been bewitched. She told those who thought that they were bewitched or under psychic attack to place a pair of scissors or an iron knife under their doormat to stop any suspected witch from crossing over the threshold. We think I think that was uh, also in Gemma Gary's book as well. Both books. So Mabel tells a story that even though she was a witch, Lillian Garner, Garner used to work in the church. One evening, she was preparing the oil lamps for the evening service when a misty figure entered and knelt in prayer. And again, this is in the um, Witches of Essex, this, this story. Now, in the um, fading light, she could see it was a woman who had no face and who was dressed in a gray shroud. When she looked again, it vanished. Now, on returning home, she encountered her uh, her strange experience. She recounted her strange experience to the family, 
who said she had obviously seen the village ghost, who, wait, who they described as a terrible creature. So, uh, Granny Garner, um, however, was not scared of ghosts, and when she was an old lady, she used to tell her grandchildren, quote, there is nothing to fear, dears, oh, only your own shadows, unquote. I want to know more. I want to know more about her, but there's not that much more in here about her. Alright, so that was just a little taste of how much better this gets. Alright, let me see if I can actually get this marked down. Okay, shoot, I'm running out of paper too. I'm running out of paper now. But yeah, I think it's really interesting. All of this. Am I going to write this? I should really number my pages. I think that would help a lot. It's just amazing. It really is. All of the history and the, you know, the folklore and the stories behind it. And I love it. Alright, let's do some coffee talk. I have not done any coffee talk for a very long time. So... God, I am still overly full. Like, overly full. I think everybody is. Oh, oh well, yeah, we were gonna do top coffee talk. Toffee cock. Coffee talk. You guys, I think I'm losing my mind. Okay, let's see. I want to do a shout out to Amy's Crypt. Um, I think your channel, you have the cutest just demeanor about you, and you're just so, I mean, you're just so sweet. I love, I love the videos that I watched um, of yours last night, especially about the gin. Except gins aren't worship, not here, or in traditional craft. But I do have my gins. And I love my gins. <laughs> so it's pretty neat. Alright. Burns the Dragon TV. Everybody, subscribe, please. Thanks for the shout out. Shoot out, Ryan. <laughs> Oh my god, I just got this, like, Wild Wild West Hi-Ho Silver image in my mind. That is... I love it. <laughs> I love you to death, Burns. Okay, Lisa O. Oh, so when I celebrate Thanksgiving, I don't think of it... Um, I don't think of it in the sense of the pilgrims, etc. I think of giving thanks to the fruits and veggies that I've grown the past year. I give thanks for the good in my life. Yeah, I know. It's just really hard to, uh, to do it on that day. For me, personally, so... But I do agree. I agree. It's a time of Thanksgiving to be thankful for what we have. Our loved ones. You know, the food, the harvest. You know, everything's been harvested already. So, yes, I agree. Oh, Gustavo. Hi, my brother. Everything is going well. Everything is going well. Alright, Tina J. Cool video. And, yeah, you have good hair, LOL. <laughs> I love you. Thank you. It looks terrible today, but thank you. I love you. Gustavo. Okay, Tina J. Coffee Talk is awesome. Thank you. Thank you for the suggestions and what to research. Oh, you're welcome. What did I tell you to do? What did I do? I really enjoy it. Eartha Kit, true icon. Oh my god. <gasps> yes, she is. The way that she talks. I love it. She is so... I mean, we need her right now. We need her right now. Okay, wish my notifications would catch you live. Kind of annoying when I see you posted. Anyway, look forward to tomorrow. Oh, that was four days ago. Click the button, the bell, um, and make sure that will let, that will let you know when I'm live. Oh, Eartha Kit, I can't believe it. I can't believe you know who Eartha Kit is. Not a lot of people do. Not a lot of people, you know, have those, you know, views and expressions and just heard the way she that she is. And I think a lot of people channel her right now, too, because of what's going on in the world. And, you know, we have a, we're supposed to live in a free democratic society, or, you know, a country. And unless we express those, uh, 
fr those freedoms, we don't know if we have them, and she expressed them to the extent of everything. I mean, she was amazing. I could go on. Oh, and by the way, Adam Lantis, yay, sunbathing, he's definitely looking happy. He's doing a lot better, 85% better. Um, the vet said that, um, so two weeks ago, it was looking at, you know, um, declining really bad and euthanization, euthanasia, euthanasia. Um, that's not even in the picture now. So thank you guys for all the prayers. Um, my darling family, Kim Lehman, thank you for um, having Chico on the prayer list at your church. That is, I mean, wonderful. Thank your pastor. I don't know what he is, a pastor, pastor. A priest, um, I, I, I don't know the right term, but the, you know, I, I'm just overwhelmed with love. Miss Felicia, 28, heart, heart. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Robert O'Donnell, Ashley Lynn, heart, aw, oh, hi. The witch is in. Hello. How are you? Michelle Lahorn, hi. I hope you guys had a really good Thanksgiving. Allison Chains, Melvin Barrios. Alright guys. I missed you guys, so I had to pop on and yeah, I'm alive. I'm here. It's just been busy. Holidays. Alright. Well, I'll see you all tomorrow. <laughs> I love you guys with all my heart. All the way from Venus all the way back down. And, yeah, everybody have a good day, good weekend, be safe, please, and um, I'll be live tomorrow, so don't worry. I love you guys.